everyone, welcome to Alex518. Today I'm going to share my methods of repairing circuit board without schematic diagram. First step that I wanted to do, as what people always does, is to perform a visual inspection. You must focus on searching burn marks, heat marks, blown components, or any physical abnormalities like bulging capacitors. One good example I got last time when I troubleshoot the motherboard, where I found an IC using microscope having a broken pin probably due to electrical overstress. The broken pin can hardly detect using Aww. naked eyes. So once you've found something on visual inspect, all you need to do then is to trace all the components that connected with the damaged area. Mark all the components involved and do the components level troubleshooting to each. If you found an IC is involved, it is recommended to just proactively replace it because IC is very sensitive to electrical overstress. It might be a walking wounded oh. IC that might soon will be totally fail. Once all components involved were checked, replace and repair, then you can send the circuit board back for functional testing. Bottom line, visual inspect in one way or another can help you speed up the repair. The second step, let's say there's no visual defect found, all you wanted to do is to start ohm check and diode mode test to all main components that multimeter can check like MOSFETs, transistors, diodes, and resistors. When I read 200 ohms, or diode mode test continuous sounds across diode pins or transistor pins, then I consider that suspected fault area. I need to remove that component and confirm the readings. If you are not yet exhausted, you can also try check the IC, but you have to see first the data sheet and find identical pins to confirm readings. One example I got before with this IC CD4001B. Looking at the data sheet, you can see four NOR gates inside, in which you can compare each other and see which one got problem. In my case, I suspected one of this IC in my PCB, so I took it off and compare with my spare good IC. And I found pin 5 and pin 6 from the suspected IC were shorted. And from the good IC is not shorted. So confirm the IC was faulty. Alright, so let us move to the third step. Let's say no defects found. On step 1, visual inspection, and step 2, ohm check and diode mode test. So in this step, what I would like to do is to find any points to power up the circuit board or PCB. I can use the regulator voltage specs to power up the board. For example, there is a 7812 regulator IC on the board and so the circuit area required 12 volts DC. You can also use like DC-DC converters to identify what voltage required to power up the PCB. Capacitor voltage rating also can be useful. For example, there is a 50 volts capacitor in the circuit and so the voltage running in the line must be maximum of 24 volts. Okay, so once you identify the voltage, then you can start powering up the board. Like for example, in my case, I found 7815 voltage regulator in the board, and so I powered it up with around 18 volts at the input of the 7815, and I should get 15 volts from the output. But it turns out, I got only 7 volts at the output. 
something was wrong in the circuit that I need to find out the root cause. After further troubleshooting, I found a PWM IC causing the 15 volts to drop down to 7 volts. Aww. Great! This method is useful. Just power up the board with the required voltage and look for voltage drop or overcurrent readings in the circuit. Okay, so for the fourth step, the final step, let's say no defects found on step one, visual inspection, step two, arm check and diode mode test, and step three, power up test troubleshooting. So in this step, what I would like to do is to proactively replace the components, especially the IC that I believe it is more related with the failure. That's it. No other choice. Some people call it shotgun method. Just replace all the IC that you suspected and bring it to testing. If it still fail, replace another group of IC until the test passed. Just make sure you do soldering and rework properly and not to damage the board and the solder pads. Believe me or not, I did many success board repairs using this shotgun method. Alright, that's all. My four steps in troubleshooting circuit board without schematic diagram. I hope it will help you in one way or another. My next topic is to share how I split the 15 volts DC into three voltages. Like in my project, I split the 15 volts to 8 volts, 5 volts, and negative 5 volts, and made a variable voltage source from 0 to 5 volts. So please subscribe, like, and share my channel. I have many repair methods to share in my upcoming videos. Thanks again, and keep safe. Goodbye.